It's so hard being a dog. So hard being a dog. Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? Morning, folks. Matt here from Pitbull Air Guns. I brought Boomer, the big boss. So hard being a dog. Speaking of dogs, we finally got in a 257. It's been a wait. We've been waiting for months and months to try to get one of these in. Um, pulled it right out of the box. Gun is completely stock. Um, all we've done is put a scope on it. I have been fiddling around in anticipation of it being here. We have already made single shot trays. So we have a 257 single shot tray to go in there. And we have made a 257 magazine, nine shots, nine shots. Um, anyway, it'll hold the same length bullet as the stock magazine, but stock magazine's only five shots. So we're gonna, this is still a prototype. It's not done yet. It's close. We needed a gun to test fit it in. So we'll play with that today and see how it does. Play with the single shot tray, see how that does. We don't have our new, uh, we don't have a King Solomon in a 257 caliber, but we brought a 357. And uh, so we'll see what it sounds like with a King Solomon on it and go from there. We brought three different ammos today. We brought a uh, 250 or 25 caliber pellet. These are 33.95 grain. And then we have a Nielsen Specialty Ammo. This is a hollow point at 75 grain. And it's a 257 caliber. And then we also have a 257 caliber 87 grain. And this is just a flat point. But we'll try all three of those today and see what kind of uh, see what kind of ballistics or power or whatever we can get out of them and, and just try this thing out before we start messing with it and tuning it and we've already got a bunch of ideas on longer reservoirs and regulators and uh, transfer port design and a whole bunch of ideas that we're thinking about trying but uh, we wanted to see what it did completely stock so give us a second to get set up here and we'll start all right so we're going to start slow we've got this thing aired up to about 3,000 um, I'm going to start off with a pellet. Um, <laughs> one thing I've already learned is you can put two pellets in the same magazine. So that's something you got to be careful about is uh, double loading your magazines. Actually, that might be fun. We might test that at the end to see how it does and load two pellets in each magazine just to see what it does. See if we can shoot two pellets at one time. Here we go nine shots let's see haven't used this magazine yet so we'll see how it does feels good all right i uh i have this thing bore sided so we should be we should be on paper should be close so i'm just going to aim at the center target for now and see what kind of uh group we get so this is the 33.95 grain pellet out of completely stocked Bulldog. Oh, about an inch right. Holy cow, 1109 feet per second. Oh. Hmm. It's there. There it goes. I don't know. A thousand ninety two. Something I got to. Oh, I'm going to have to adjust the timing on our on our uh, magazine a little bit. Thousand eighty. Hmm. We may go back to using the stock magazine. Okay. 
2063. I'm going to pull that out. Oh, I see the issue. That's a simple fix. Okay. I understand the issue. We'll fix it on the next load. Thousand fifty three, thousand thirty two, thousand thirteen, nine nine nine. And 979. So we were losing in the beginning about 10 feet per second on each one, and towards the end about 20 feet per second on each one. So there was, unfortunately, that means there was zero bell curve. Um, we might get a bell curve out of uh, a heavier bullet. We'll just have to see. But that's kind of disappointing that we didn't have any bell curve. But anyway, let's walk down and look at our, uh, our group. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I see eight holes, nothing else around. So there must be somewhere where we've got two in one hole. I'm positive I shot nine times, but we've got a group of three here. Maybe we've got something going here. It almost looks like we've got two separate groups, but what are we looking at? A one, two, three inch group approximately. So, not great. We're only at about 45 yards right here. So, not a great group. But, in reality, pellets don't really like to move that fast anyway. So, if we slowed it down a bit with a regulator to like 950 or something like that, we might have a better group. But, again, it's a 257 barrel with a 2.5 pellet. I don't think that pellet was really designed to be shot out of a 257 caliber barrel so anyway it may never shoot pellets that's not really what that gun was designed for it was designed for slugs so let's go try some slugs i see you buddy i see you you gonna dance with me huh you gonna dance with me so you always load these magazines from the back I think I'm going to put a arrow here so you know how to rotate them, just like the factory mag has an arrow. But uh, anyway, just rotate it around, slide a bullet in. We will have an o ring on this one, like our modded mags. I just, like I said, this is a prototype and it's not done yet. So hold your finger over this hole as you turn, like I do here, so the bullet doesn't fall through. So I think this time, because we had no bell curve on the pellets, I'm going to try to fill it up to about 3,500 and see if we can get any kind of a bell curve then. Maybe we're just right there at the edge. Sounds like a crazy woman screaming. Looks like we got close to about 3,600, so we'll be all right. How's that look over here? Right at 35 here. So anyway, nine shot magazine. Let's see how it handles slugs. My high quality seat here. See, I'm going to go for the top left target and see where we're at. No, I'm going to go bottom right. Bottom right target.
915. Nine hundred eight eight four. Those two are touching though. Eight seven five. We have three shots in the same hole down there. Eight six one. That one was a little bit high. Eight four one, back. That one was back in our main hole. Well, eight three one. So we're still dropping about ten feet per second on each one. Eight nineteen. Eight fourteen. Oh, that's it. So, and we did design the magazine so that it stops when you're on your last round or when it's empty. So, again, no bell curve. I'm still kind of disappointed in that. Um, Power-wise, that's okay. I'll have to get my calculator out. But anyway, let's go take a look. There's like five in that one hole right here or four one two three four five so there's four in that hole it only looks like three but that's not bad so we're about mm, about a two inch group the each one of these squares is, is about an inch so that was a flyer if you ignored that one then not bad a lot better than the pellets that's minute of rabbit, minute of hog, you know, hog heart, not a problem. I still think it could be better than that. But you, you kind of have to search around and find the best ammo. We'll, uh, let's try those uh, Hunter Supply. Hunter Supply is not notorious for being a very accurate bullet, but you never know. Let's give it a try. Is it tug of war time? Hmm? All right, I'm gonna air up. I'm gonna air up to 4,000. I know that's more than what this magazine or what this tube should ever hold, but I've I got to see if there's some kind of bell curve here. All right, now we're gonna try the uh, 87 grain flat point from Hunter Supply. I'm going to go top left target. Eight forty two. Eight fifty seven. So at four thousand PSI, we're finally getting a bell curve. What's our PSI over here? We're still still like 39 3800 873 we're still over our gauge 896 that is an amazing group guys i'd say we're like at 3700 3800 somewhere in there 897 so still picking up speed 36 3700 888 so we've come off of our top of our bell curve we're at like 35 3600 now 883 we're 34 to 3,500 now. 
877. This will be our last shot, and we're about 3,300. So 861 on our last shot, and we ended at about 32, 3,300. So that was a much better group, actually. There's several there's several shots that are just all in one hole. But uh, let's go take a look. Come here. How do you get tangled up so bad, huh? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. You're tied in a knot. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Okay, so there's... That's a nine-shot group. One, two, three, four. And then the last five are in that line right there. So that's not a bad group. Inch and, uh, inch and a quarter-ish group at 50 yards, which is... It's not great, but if you can... You can sort those bullets and figure out sorting them will get you in that one little five shot group that'd be a pretty nice accurate group we did finally find our bell curve it's way above what the recommended fill pressure is for that gun which kind of disturbs me um, but I'm interested to see uh, I'm interested to calculate that power see how much power we got out of it let's go do that real quick Okay, so I entered 87 grains. Our fastest speed was 897 feet per second with those. And we that comes out to 155.4 foot-pounds of energy. So I think they they advertised this gun as being 150. So we did get what they advertised. Um, but at 4,000 4, PSI field pressure. So anyway... Let's uh, let's give give the Nielsen's a shot. Let's fill back to four thousand, which I do not recommend anybody do with the stock reservoir. But we'll fill to four thousand and we'll shoot nine of the Nielsen's again and see if we get a bell curve with those and see if we get more accurate. So let's try that. All right, so I'm back at four thousand psi. This time we're going to be using the Nielsen 75 grain. And uh, I'll just pick a different spot and go from there. I'm going to go. Uh, there's an old target that was there before that still has a good spot. I'm going to go the bottom right of that. So 895. Eight ninety nine. So we did. We're still above a bell curve on this too. Nine thirteen. What are we at? Hard to tell. Probably still thirty eight hundred or so. Nine thirty four. Looks 37, 3,800. 919. Okay, we're coming off of our bell curve. So our top was about 37, 3,800. 925. 9,12. Nine ten. This will be our last. No, that was our last one. So that last one was nine oh four, and we ended at about thirty three hundred psi. Let's go take a look. So many things to chase. So we had a pretty decent group. These were our last couple shots. But if we take those off, we're about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that. But those last couple shots were a noticeable drop. So anyway, still still not bad. I'm glad that we found the top of the bell curve for stock. We need to go calculate what kind of energy that was. Um, but man, it should not. We should not be running 
that high of a pressure on stock tube. So just for science, folks, don't don't do what we're doing. We're stupid. So, anyway, come on. Okay, so I calculated our energy on that one for the 75 grain, and the highest we got was 145.24 foot pounds of energy, which did not meet our uh, advertised power. Um, we could get more power by going with a heavier bullet, but we only bought bullets that would fit in the factory magazine. So uh, now that we have a single shot tray, I'll order some longer, heavier bullets and see what we can do with those. But uh, we just didn't have the gun. We didn't know if this was going to work. So we wanted to make sure we had stuff that would work with the factory mag. But I will order some. Um, probably won't do that. Probably won't show that until after we've modified the gun a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna go in stages and see what we can figure out. But, uh, so we'll have several more videos. Anyway, um, I think now we're gonna do some decibel testing. I'm gonna try out my single shot tray and make sure it loads okay. But let's do a few shots with uh, without a moderator on it, and then we'll put a moderator on it and see uh, see what it sounds like. All right. Okay, disclaimer here. Everybody gets caught up in numbers on decibel readers. This is like the cheapest thing I could get on Amazon. I did machine a extension tube on it, and we did put a little dead cat on it. Um, I'm going to turn it around here and keep talking in the voice that I am just so you can see what it is. Just a normal voice right here. So I'm going to do it. So it's going to hold max. All right. So this is just a normal talking voice. I can't see what it went to, but this gives you an idea of what the reading looks like. With high wind. With high wind. Yeah. What did it come 96. out to? 96. So. All right. I'm going to pass that to you. We're going to do five shots. I'm just going to shoot into the berm here. And and understand that we have echoes from the from the walls of this berm also. So, here we go. What was your high there? 111.5. All right. Okay. The loudest thing to me is the ping. This thing needs a deep pinger so bad it's absolutely a, just atrocious. But uh, let me uh, reload and refill, and we'll do five more with the moderator on it. Now, this is not a 257. This is a 357 version. So it should still work pretty good. Let me, let me reset this for you, Polly. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. It may not sound like it's you, but all I hear now is the ping and the, the hit. Okay, that's it. All right, I want to do one more thing. We would get 101, so 100 dec or 10 decibel drop, which is significant. Um, I want to put a fresh wiper in this because I've shot this moderator several times out of my personal 357. Um, let me put a fresh wiper in it and see what our first shot, just one shot, is with that. Because a fresh wiper will make a big difference. All right, so... Our moderator has notches in it for a handheld tool, or you can put a 3 8 ratchet in it in case you have poor hand strength, um, something like that. I personally, I'm a disabled veteran, but it's my back. But I understand that some people 
need more strength so you can put a ratchet wrench on each end to undo it but i'm i'm blessed with really good hand strength just just to show you you can just undo it by hand the edges will grip into your palm really nice and i'm going to take that old wiper out put a new wiper down in there and just make sure it's squished in around the thread really well and then slide it back together okay I'm just going to use my single shot tray just to shoot one round I'm going to do a heavy bullet All right, let me reset this for you. Just us knocking it around on the table and setting it down, it's 115 decibels. Just kind of give you an idea of what the true sound level is. You ready? I can hear the difference, but the ping on this, the ping is so loud that all I hear is the ping and the bullet hitting. It still was quieter. So what did that say, 98? That's, that's still another three decibels just off adding a wiper. So um, I'm very pleased with that. You will notice um, with a wiper installed, you will notice a sound drop. It, it is quieter. Um, wipers have been around in pistol suppressors and, and silencers for decades. Um, I've personally used them. I've seen them. Sometimes they're gel. Sometimes they're... Uh, the polypropylene or whatever it is that we're using they use, use different things for the years they are a wearable item and they do have to be changed and you're also going to not notice a loss in accuracy because the the bullet is actually contacting something as it comes through um, but typically if you're wanting to be that quiet you're shooting pretty close and it's not going to be something that's going to be bigger than what your target is you're not gonna, it's not something that you'd want to use at extreme bench rest while you're trying to shoot for accuracy. But if you're trying to stay as quiet as you possible, possibly can and be up close, then it's going to be perfect for you. Um, the next thing we need to do is we've got to get rid of the ping on this thing. It's not a banjo, it's a bulldog. So we need to get rid of the ping. But uh, I think that's all we have for today, guys. What is, uh, let's look at our, let's look at our end here. Yeah, here you can see as the bullet came through, it poked its own little hole. Um, pointed bullets will make a smaller hole, but that flat pointed bullet just punched out a perfect little, perfect little radius of the end of the bullet. But, uh, and it's good for a few shots, but it's, it's made to be a wearable item. So anyway, there is everything that we know to tell you about a stock bulldog. Do um, you have anything else to add, huh? Is it fetchable? Hmm? If you lick it, does it taste good? Hmm? No, I don't think it does. Anyway, we love you guys. We'll see you next time. Uh, give us a week or two, and we will start making some mods and get back with you. All right? Y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you then. Eye boogers. Look at those eye boogers. Look at those eye boogers. <laughs>